Hello and welcome to the second edition of the Harvesters video series. Um, so we're looking at how we can be witnesses and co-workers with God in his harvest field. Uh, my name's Jill and I'd just like to start with a prayer. Lord, thank you that you call us to be co-workers. I pray for your anointing and I pray that you'll give us all ears to hear what you are saying to us at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. My late husband, George, was not a believer when, um, when we started going out together and uh, they caused a great deal of angst. But anyway, um, I would uh, say a little bit about what I believe, but not very much. And uh, he didn't ask me anything until one day when he said to me, OK, tell me about Jesus. Well, I did. And uh, I, I gave him a journey into life. I mentioned journey into life last week, but this was in 1988. So uh, it's, it's quite an old leaflet. I gave it to him and I suggested he read it. And so the next day, I picked him up from work or went to see him after work and he was um, he was a farm uh, worker, farm labourer and uh, a, a very steady down to earth guy. Um, and when I went to see him on my way home from work, he was shaking and uh, he said that he'd he'd read this leaflet at, at, in his lunch break in, in his little um, he had like a little hut in the, in the farm and he said he had a vision of Jesus. Jesus came to him and um, there was a bright light, Jesus calling him and there was a darkness holding him back. And it, it so shook him that, as I say, he was shaking when I went to see him at the end of the day. Um, so, of course, I said to him, well, did you read the prayer at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the book? And he said, no, I, di I didn't, no. And I said, so do you want to read it now? And he said, no, I don't, Jill, not with you here. He said, I'll do it in my own time. So I backed off. And um, the next day at lunchtime, I, while I was um, at work, uh, I went on a prayer walk with a, a colleague who's a Christian and we were praying for him. And, uh, and he gave his life to the Lord. And uh, yeah, you know, I had very little to do with it. Ten years later, um, after he'd gone home to be with his Lord, um, I was at a Christian conference and I was sitting outside. It was lunchtime. I was sitting outside and I was looking at a huge um, uh, oak tree with lots of leaves. It was about this time of year. And the Lord said to me so clearly, so shall your offspring be. And I looked at all those leaves and I thought, wow. God called me through that and through other things into ministry. But I have to confess, I haven't led many people to Jesus, as in I haven't led them in a prayer of commitment. Um, God has gifted me as a, as a pastor, as a preacher. I, I, I sow seed and water them. And I don't often get the joy of leading someone. Um, Others do that. And I'm, fi I'm fine with that. I really do believe that God has fulfilled his promise to me uh, of a fruitful, a fruitful ministry. But people in their journey towards God and then with God, he's there throughout, but that journey, there are different stages. And, and in anybody's journey, lots of people will have had... Um, an input at different stages in their lives. God calls us to uh, to sow seed, to water seed, and to reap harvest as his co-workers. And um, there will be a time to sow and a time to water and a time to reap when it, when we need to challenge somebody to make the decision but what is so important is that we listen to the Holy Spirit's guiding 
because it, the Holy Spirit, God in us, will will let us know, will will uh, will guide us as to where the person is at and and what what we are to do as we share testimony, as we tell our story. We need to be listening to the Spirit and listening to them as to what stage in the journey they are at. And we're at week two in our Harvesters series. And uh, if you have caught the, the last week's video, then you will have been, I hope, praying and seeking God as to who he wants you to share your story with, to witness to, who he's already working in and is at, at just the right, uh, right stage in their life story to listen to your life story. Stories are important. I don't know if you've experienced it, but when I, I lift, list, list, listen to sermons, it's when they start telling stories that it really, you know, if, if, this, if the, the rest of it is a little bit boring, it's when they tell a story that I come alive. Um, Paul, who was a great preacher, as in the Apostle Paul, um, his story is told three times in the book of Acts, and I find that fascinating. Amongst all the theology and all the stuff that he said, the, the actual event of, of his conversion um, is told, and then he tells it in two other places, in, in Acts 22 and 26. Story is important. Um, we can't argue with somebody's story. We can argue with the other stuff, but we, we, we can't argue with their, their story because it's their story. And often when we hear a story, we can relate to it. Then it makes a difference in our lives. The power of testimony. I love the story of the, the lady from Samaria that's told in John 4. And often that story is told um, as a, and we look at, we focus on, on Jesus and how he, he relates to the woman. But, but actually her response to Jesus and what happens next is, is amazing, incredible really. Now I do um, a, a little bit of, of drama and so I just want to, to, um, to share from my imagination, how I imagine the woman from Samaria would be after she had encountered Jesus. Oh. Hope you bear with me. I opened and shut my mouth. He was the Messiah. And suddenly everything made sense. Of course, he was the Messiah. He was the Messiah. He was the Messiah. I started to speak and then I heard a chattering behind me and, and turning I saw a group of men coming up. There must have been his followers. I looked at him, I looked at them, I put down my water a jar and I ran hell for leather into the village. He was the Messiah and if he was the Messiah, if he'd really come to visit us, then they all needed to know. And as I ran, I felt free, full, alive. Joy coursed through me. He was the Messiah, and yet he'd spoken to me with such gentleness and compassion and respect, spoken to me in a way I'd never been spoken to before. I could feel his love, not a dirty love, but a pure love. He knew all about me, and yet he loved me. Wow! I must have been a sight. Running, shouting, tears of joy pouring down my face. Everyone stopped what they were doing and stared at me. Come and see the man who's told me everything I've ever done. Could he be the Messiah? And I said it again and again and again. And people began to take notice. People began to listen as I told them about this man who had made such an impact on me. And they could see, they could see by my face, they could see by the way I stood, whole, pure, a child of the living God. They could see and they could hear as I told them what Messiah had done for me. 
And so they rushed out to meet them for himself. And they even persuaded him to come to our village so they could hear them. You, they could hear him for themselves. And you know, suddenly I wasn't the whore. I was Messiah's friend. I'd brought Messiah to them. And they treated me differently. After that, things were never the same again. I love the way that passage ends. The people of the village say to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you have said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. Oh, that when I share my testimony, my story with people, that is what they say. We know and believe for ourselves this Jesus is the saviour of the world. So what about your story? Can you think of what happened before you met Jesus? When you met Jesus? It might not be a, a Damascus Road experience like Paul had or, 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 or such a powerful experience like the woman from Samaria had, but your experience is valid. Your experience is real and it's your experience. Can you think about that? And what about since then? Have there been times in your life where, you, where you've faced real challenge and the and and God has made a difference. Your relationship with Jesus has made a difference. What about now in this current pandemic and all the things that are going on? How has Jesus made a difference in your life? Because he will have made a difference. It's not saying that everything's easy. Jesus said, uh, you'll have trouble in this world. But take heart, I have overcome the world. What is your story? And in this coming week, that's what I'd like you to think about. What is your story? Write it down. Pray about it. Ask God to bring to mind the parts of your story that he wants you to share with other people. And you should have been praying for people. I hope you've been praying for people this week and and who he's leading you to and maybe you've had the opportunity to share something of your story already this week with those that you've been praying for and when we share we really are not saying that we've got all the answers but we're saying that Jesus makes a difference one of um, my husband Martin's old pastors used to say to all his congregation, you need to have a three minute testimony and a 10 minute testimony. You need to have thought through that so that at any moment in time, God can say, right, speak, for that. speak to that person, speak to that person and, and you've got something. But of course, we need to be led by the spirit who will tell us what to say and how to say it. But if we've thought through our story, if we've maybe got a few um, of the of the times when when we've really um, encountered Jesus or when He's really made a difference to us, then uh, then He can bring it to mind. So bless you this week as you think about your story and write it down as you seek God and as you pray and walk with God this week. May you know His love. His love for you that goes beyond measure. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you that you have made an impact in our lives. And as we think about our story, we seek you and we ask you to bring the things to mind that you want us to remember. And Lord, we pray for those people who you have laid on our hearts. We pray that you'll be working in them this week. And if you want us to do anything or say anything, then will you lead us and guide us that we may walk in your ways and bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.